today with me I have Kirsten Hale. Um, she's a concept artist and character designer, and she is very talented. She's worked uh, at the Waterford Institute and for Kaleidoscope Entertainment, and she just recently had a booth at CTN and released a book, uh, her art book called Dungeon Crawler. So I'll be sure to post a link to that in the uh, description so you guys can go check it out. Um, and she's super talented. So really appreciate you being being able to come in today and uh, have me interview you. So to start out, uh, I always like to ask people, what uh, were you always an artist when you were a little kid? Did you like to draw or did this develop later in life? Uh, well, as a kid, I always kind of was artistically inclined. I kind of liked to doodle. Uh, I remember I would be sitting with uh, my dad in church and he, in order to keep his kids entertained, he'd draw like astronauts blowing up aliens. And I always thought that was kind of entertaining. So I started trying to draw that kind of stuff and it just went on from there. Gotcha. Okay. So it's, it, you've been drawing since you were a kid. At what point did you yeah. really start to feel like you wanted to do this for a profession or were, ever since you were a little, you're like professional artist. That's me. I'm, I'm going to do it. <laughs> uh, no, I actually didn't figure it out until maybe about like, um, junior high school, high school, that kind of age. Um, that I really wanted to do this professionally. I always thought I'd do uh, like editorial cartoons, like Calvin and Hobbes type stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I decided to pursue animation because I got into uh, cartoons. I saw pencil tests for Brother Bear, and I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. So Sweet. Uh, that's about what it started. So what artists do you feel like inspired you? Or uh, even in today's work, uh, your stuff is mostly character designs. What artists do you feel like you uh, your art is reminiscent of or that motivates your style? Oh gosh, that's a hard question because I'm a combination of lots of different artists over however long I've been drawing. I mean, when I was a kid, you know, I was always influenced by, you know, anime and manga and uh, European cartoons like Asterix and Obelix and all that. I like both of those things and both of those kind of mm -hmm. came in and influenced me when I was younger, but um, then I started, you know, doing research into Disney. Glenn King was pretty inspirational to me. Uh, then I moved on, and uh, Cheeks Galloway was pretty influential. Uh, I know that right now some of my big influences are like uh, Corey Loftus, Helen Chen, uh, most of the concept artists, you know, like you see working at Disney nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of my personal friends, um, people that I went to school with. So, I mean, like Aubrey Archer. Uh, Jenna Hamazawi, I'm sorry if I messed up her name. She's going to kill me later, but, uh, no, I mean, awesome. those, I'm just an influence of so many different things coming in and it's how I combine to those. It really kind of, I think makes someone unique. Okay. So when you, uh, were starting out and you were deciding that this is what you wanted to do, what were some of the challenges you faced that were difficult for you to overcome? Oh gosh, there's so many. Um, for me, it's just, I, I lived in, um, I mean, I, I grew up in American Fort, just like 30 minutes south of Salt Lake City. And in Utah, there's not a whole lot of the animation influence. I don't even know where to begin as far as how am I going to go to school for this? What kind of stuff do they look for? So it's just a general kind of knowledge thing, but luckily the internet kind of took off and most of that information got posted up. So I'd listen to podcasts. Uh, I'd listen, I, I'd go online, find articles. I'd go find these artists and basically try to build that. Cause I mean, growing up, it was just information. Right. Um, and then it's just overcoming my own uh, insecurities about myself. I, I tend to be very kind of a bit of a perfectionist and that has always kind of been a bit of a challenge because I feel like everything that I do has to be perfect and are coming to realize that it's not going to be perfect every single time and I'm going to make a lot of bad drawings um, and just kind of accepting that has kind of helped uh, me to get better personally as an artist because loosen up the ideas come a lot easier so I mean that's kind of just most of the challenges mm -hmm. that I've got um, so for someone new who a lot of times you hear, especially I've heard this from high school teachers, uh, 
who aren't art teachers, but that art is a is a dumb career that there's no you're you're never going to be successful. It's impossible. Do you think that's true? Um, I want to say no, but also there's a caveat to be yes. I uh, there is you know the whole starting artist mentality. But there's also an aspect to it to where you can have a viable career. And I think it's just depend, it depends on what you pick and what you go into. Uh, for example, entertainment is a lot more stable than being like a fine arts kind of person mm-hmm. where you have gallery shows and things like that. Because that is a lot more uh, sparse and difficult than entertainment. Entertainment, there's movies, there's games, there's apps. I mean, there's just so much stuff that needs artwork. So there is a career to be had, mm-hmm. I think. So art is not dumb, and it's not something, you know, that you can't make a living out of. But like I said, you can, it depends on which path you choose to follow because one will definitely have be a little bit more stable, mm-hmm. and one is definitely a feast and famine. Right. So then uh, for you, you just went to CTN, uh, a couple weeks ago, and you had a table. What uh, what did you find? How did it go for you? Was it uh, anything eye opening? Did it go pretty successfully for you? What what were your thoughts? Uh, I went. I actually tabled with my husband. Okay, which was great because he's also an artist. Oh, cool. Uh, so having him there was great, but it was also for me. It was definitely a learning experience because this is the first time. I've ever tabled with my peer. It's a fan event. And then CTN is definitely something where your peers show up. It's a big like artist party is what I call it. Mm-hmm. Um, so when people, you know, come up to you and say, Oh, I've seen that. I've seen that. I I've seen your work. It's, it's very flattering. And it was eye opening because I realized people see my work and they, they recognize me and, so I'm not as, you know, small, the small little fish in the pond that I thought I was. I still have a lot, you know, a long way to go and a lot to learn. But, mm. I mean, it was kind of nice just to see. I can run with the big boys. Right. And be part of the big club, so. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so then what are kind of like your, your goals for the future? Where do you want, what's like the ultimate end all goal for Kirsten? Where are you trying to reach? Oh, man. Uh, I think my goals tend to shift and change over time, depending on where I'm at in my life. Uh, I think one of the goals I've had since I was really little and started doing this is like, oh, I want to go work for Disney. And that's, that's still true for some extent. I mean, I would love to go work for Disney, but how I accomplish that, you know, has obviously changed. Um, right now, my husband works for The Void here in, in Utah. Oh, wow. That's I'm, a, a I'm actually working on getting in at the void, so I might have to yeah. meet your husband. So anyways, no, that's awesome. Yeah, you'll have to hit him up sometime. But um, because he's at such a good place and it's a great opportunity, it's a cool project, uh, living in Utah right now is probably the best bet for us. So I've had to kind of shift gears. It's no longer about applying to studios directly. It's about freelancing at this point. And if I get freelance work from Disney and work for them, hey, you know what? Hmm. Check that off the bucket list. I choose that one. But right. I guess your your my goals will tend to shift and change depending on where I'm at in my life. So cool. Um, and then yeah, one one last question for anyone who is trying to get to where you are. If you could, you know, like some advice you could tell your younger self just starting out. What would you tell someone trying to become an artist? What what they need to know. Like, oh gosh. Well, well, okay. Yeah, it's just like picking from a laundry list on that one. Because if I could go back and tell myself all sorts of things, <laughs> I, I, I'd probably be further. I, I don't know where I'd be, but I mean, I think probably the biggest thing is just to stick with it. It is hard to do this, and I think the hardest um, avenue to go through, which is you know character design. Everyone wants to be a character designer, and not everybody's going to get the opportunity to do that. So you really kind of have to have a mental toughness and resilience. So, I mean, it's going to be discouraging, and some days you're just going to go, oh, what am I 
doing? I don't have it. Who am I kidding? And you kind of have to muscle through those days. So I think I'd go and probably tell them, what I probably tell a lot of people is just stick with it. If you want it bad enough and you work and you keep at it, you'll eventually find a way to get there. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know, you got to be a little resilient and kind of just have faith in yourself. I probably say. Awesome. I think that sounds like great advice. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this quick interview with me today. Um, no problem. It was great. I think a lot of people who like your work will like to see this and get to know you a little bit more. So thanks for meeting with me today and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Oh, you too.